What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Casey, and we are talking about The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 11, for the second time. (laughs) So this is how this was supposed to go. Casey and I went to Sonoya over the weekend on Sunday. We went to uh, Nick and Norman's for the viewing party. We did a golf cart tour and we decided while we were there that we were going to record our episode and talk about the Stephanie, not Stephanie reveal and everything. And so we sat in front of Alexandria. It was a great spot. Got ready to record. We recorded. It was a little bit windy, but I don't know what happened, but the video just did not do what it was supposed to do. So here we are again, re-recording, and uh, we're wearing our Resist the Commonwealth shirts that Casey made for us that were a big hit on Sunday. So um, yeah, so we're doing that. But before we get into this episode, we have a couple of other things that I want to talk about real quick because yesterday uh well yes yes no was it yesterday yes it was yesterday Tuesday Tuesday it was revealed that there will be another Walking Dead spinoff debuting in 2023 and this one features Maggie and Negan and it's called Isle of the Dead and it takes place in New York City so I was at home in the bed yesterday. Uh, I was not feeling well. Uh, so Casey tagged me in something. I happened to wake up and look at it. I was like, why is she tagging me this early in the morning? Because usually when Casey is at work, she's at work. She don't look at her phone, nothing. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like, what is she tagging me? And I go to open it up and I'm like, what? Like. So we know at least four people make it to the end. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. Because when I tell you Twitter and the fandom, it's like half of them are excited about this. You know, you have some who can't stand Negan. So they're pissed off about it. You know, there's a lot of people who don't like the whole Negan and Maggie dynamic. So they're pissed off about it. But then there are other people who are pissed off. Like y'all should have waited to reveal this because now you just told us that two other characters survive past the end of the, you know, the end of the season. And I'm like, most of y'all motherfuckers complaining are the same ones who were leaking set pics from last week guess what i don't mind like spoilers like that of course i i I welcome like that type of spoiler because let me know know let me know i have something else to look forward to right and we want to know that some of the people we like or, or you know that not everybody in this world just gets left behind when the final episode airs Mm -hmm. yeah it's great that carol and daryl are are having adventures after this but we want i still would have wondered what what happened with negan what happened with maggie right you you, you know what i mean so i'm glad they did it right a couple more people get a spinoff who knows i mean i wouldn't be mad open for it i wouldn't be mad but you know i think it's i think it's interesting because we have had some very interesting discussions about Maggie and Negan and that whole dynamic and and kind of the turnaround in between the characters and how people are interpreting it or how people feel about it and you know me I've been you know I've been very vocal about the fact that yes I do not like Negan because of what he did to Glenn but I like seeing what they're doing with this character and also what they're doing with Maggie's character because what they're really doing is showing that this world this zombie apocalypse world is not black and white There are shades of gray all across the board. And the people who we consider good are not always necessarily good. And the people that we consider bad are not always necessarily bad. You know, one of the things we have to remember is most of the Alexandrians would not be alive right now if it wasn't for Negan, because Negan infiltrated the Whisperers and literally took off the head of the serpent. So, you know... All of the characters have their good points and they have their bad points. And this was 
a view I really got to express this Sunday because Seth Gilliam came into Nick and Norman's and he was taking pictures with people. We went outside to ask him for a picture and got to talk to him for a little bit. And just, you know, I let him know how I appreciated what he has done with the character of Gabriel and how he's, you know, the complexities within the character and how he portrays him. Like when he's really pissed, you feel that pissivity of him. And then when he's really happy, you feel it and you feel all the nuances in between. And I think that's the same for all of these characters, you know, and the Maggie and Negan thing is really interesting, especially because they have such great chemistry. And I'm not talking about just Lauren and JDM. I'm talking about the characters themselves, Maggie and Negan. And I know a lot of people look at it as like a sexual tension and they don't like it. I do think that there's a little bit of that there, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that the show will expound upon because one, that would just be disrespectful as hell to Glenn's memory. Uh Two, you would lose an already dwindling fan base because you have a lot of people who stopped watching the show when Glenn died. And, you know, as much as we say, you know, it's just a story or whatever, people are invested in the characters. And there are some people who very strongly feel like Negan and Maggie should not even be interacting. And I respect that because that's a very valid feeling to have. I look at it in a different way because both of those characters again, have their faults, but they also both bring something valuable to our group. And it's very interesting watching them try to navigate that. Like, I don't think Negan wants to be an asshole just to be an asshole. He was put into that position way back when, you know, similar to what, I mean, like I said, he created the monster that is Maggie now, you know, the Oh yeah, you're you're turning out to be exactly like me. You're you're taking the risks and you're you know, you're making the hard decisions and stuff. Negan had to do that too, you know, because of what happened to him when he was trying to get um, you know, medicine for his wife. Right. It's just it's an interesting dynamic and I'm really interested to see how they're going to play this like first of all, how do Maggie and Negan get to New York? where does that come in you know right is herschel gonna be there what what, what city were they in when they were on the subway was that supposed to be dc Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. so you know is herschel gonna be part of this story you know the uh the account for the young actor who plays him retweeted the news and said looking you know very excited about this so i was like okay so are they gonna include herschel in that it would be kind of maybe weird it'll not be to. a future. Maybe it'll be like a future, and they have someone playing him as an adult. Could be because I have heard that said as well about the main show. Like maybe they're going to age RJ and Judith up because you know the question has come up about who's going to take Carl's storyline in the comics. You know, Carl eventually becomes the leader, but he's not there to do that. And we thought for a while they were you know, kind of setting Henry up to do that. And then they killed him off. So at this point, I feel like it's either going to be Lydia or it's going to be Judith. And I really think Judith is probably the better choice because she doesn't have the history that Lydia has with the group. But we never know. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. But, you know, the other thing is what else is in New York? the CRM. So I wonder again, if that's going to tie in because I, I, I'm mm. telling you the CRM has to tie in to this final season. They have what to would make, and then it, to that point, what would make her go to New York? I don't know. There would have to be something. Yep. Yeah, oh, well, shit. Okay. I can't even talk about today's episode, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you can't, <laughs> You, we, we can't talk about that yet. What, talk about but that. you're right. What? Because like that was kind of the question we had when Michonne left. Like, what? What's gonna make you leave your kids? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So for Maggie, everything that she has, meaning Glenn, is in Hilltop. Mm-hmm. So what? What would make her leave that? You know, yeah, her son can go anywhere with her, but to then take her son and then be in the with the likes of Negan. 
That's going to be interesting. I'm sure at some point her son is going to have questions about her dad. Which, but we're she's already said he has. Dude, yeah. But we traveling with the dude who killed your dad. Yeah. You know, so, I really want to see how that plays out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I was gonna say they have a lot, a, a lot of ways to explore that, mm-hmm. and I'm sure they'll get into it. But that's that's gonna be a good piece of it right there. Six episodes. A, what? It's a six episode show again, but they do they they have been saying a six episode first season, so there is the possibility okay. they may renew it. I guess it just depends well, the on how it only started off the six episodes. So that's true. That's true. So get it together. Yeah. But you know, that is supposed to debut in the same year that we are getting the Carol and Daryl spinoff. So that's the, it would be everybody splintering off to do yeah. different things. Yeah. But the other thing is, too, people are pissed. They're like, we got a title for the Mag and Negan show, but we still don't have no kind of information on Carol and Daryl, and we have no information on the Rick Grimes movies. What the fuck is this? I'm like, AMC you know, knows what they know they do. AMC knows exactly what they know. I mean, they know that we're going to stick around if, to wait. Like, if they wait until the last episode of this season to tell me some Rick, Rick Grimes information, absolutely, I'm still going to be sitting here for it. They have to. They have you to. You know why? You know why? Because who is going to sit around to the end? And and they're smart in, the, in that. And I don't know how smart or purpose. It probably wasn't on purpose. But the fact that people saw Rick in Atlanta now even people who probably watched the show it, it fell off it's like oh on, Rick coming back mm-hmm. so they 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 know what they're doing they smart because right. I'm sure that because in the early stages like even when like when Morgan was gone and they brought Lenny James to town they had him secluded somewhere mm-hmm. so yeah he was nobody knew you know he was back right you know what i mean so they could have very meticulously hidden andrew lincoln that, that's could, true mm-hmm. but they did it why oh andrew lincoln's in atlanta and then y'all want to go to one of the popular restaurants mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. come on now mm-hmm. yeah i'm and sure take you pictures and up with your friend yeah. i'm really sure you were but <laughs> come on now i know they did that shit on purpose it's they, all marketing and you know what I really don't care because either. either way it goes, I'm watching this show till the end, whether That's Rick shows up or not, because, and, and I hate to say this too. I understand that Rick Grimes will always be the heart of the walking dead always, but we have to look at things realistically for his own personal reasons. Andrew Lincoln left the show mm-hmm. and he's been gone now for four years. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's fair to the show to keep on with the whole i mean yes bring rick back by all means but don't sit here and talk down about the other characters just because that's not what you want to see because the walking dead yeah i mean as much as it's you know rick hart rick grimes is the heart of it it is very much an ensemble show yeah very much so and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we discuss the next episode because there were some complaints about how certain things were discussed in the next episode and people were like oh they just forgot about rick and blah blah blah." i was like wait what oh yes we'll we'll talk about it we'll talk about it later but yeah so anyway negan and maggie spinoff 2023 i'm here for it i'm I'm here here for for it it. me too right so me great Right. So let's get on with the episode because Stephanie, not Stephanie, really is not Stephanie. And our poor baby Eugene had to find that out in the most horrendous of ways. You know, it was just heartbreaking. But, you know, I said this when we recorded Sunday, I feel bad for Eugene in all of this, but I felt like when when I was watching the episode for the first time and this was happening, he was going through his heartbreak. I felt like, you know what, Eugene? Does this seem familiar to you? Because it's pretty much the same thing he did to Abraham and Rosita 
when he first met them and lied about who he was or rather lied about what he was and where he needed to go and why. I was like, oh, so now you know how this feels. But we already know he knows how it feels. We know he's he's more than, you know, repented for it. He's made up for it, you know, a thousand fold with the things that he has done for the community. Um, But I was just kind of like, eh, you kind of sort of, you know, it's kind of like one of those. You deserve it. You deserve part to that. He did and he didn't. I would say maybe Eugene from three years ago, I would say he probably deserved it. This Eugene, nah, I don't think so because he has been doing everything he can to be a productive member of the group. And if you look back, even the time when he was with Negan, you know, we were all upset, like, oh, how could he just, you know, he's Negan and this, that, and the other. There was always a small part of me that thought that, you know, felt like maybe he was pretending, but he was so convincing about it. Mm-hmm. But that's the one thing that makes Eugene a really good character, if you think about it, because he has that ability to be able to lie with a straight face in order to get things done. He had to be convincing for Negan to think, oh, yeah, you know, you just you just betrayed Rick. I mean, convincing to the point where Rick was about to blow his ass up when the saviors came. (laughs) Right. He might need to work on that just a little bit and say, you know, some kind of sign like, yo, I know I'm pretending here, but I need you to know that I'm pretending. (laughs) You know, what? I think in this episode, I don't think he was pretending. I honestly think he (laughs) finally... hate to say it like this but he finally got him a little song and he was like oh i love you but here's the thing i don't want you to go nowhere so now naturally when he thinks that she is missing oh i gotta go find my boo thing Mm -hmm. i have to go find out what happened to her so he was genuinely concerned yeah and i think too we have to remember they've been in the commonwealth for a while you know at least eugene because eugene was one of the first people there so he's been there at this point, probably months, right? you know? So he's had the time to establish a friendship with her and establish a relationship or, you know, the, the friendship technically was already established because he and Stephanie had been communicating over the radio. Right. So that was, not- right. Well, we don't, I mean, we know who the real Stephanie is now. And she, you know, she says that she's the one that was on the radio, but he, at this point, he doesn't know that. And we don't know that for all we know, Stephanie, not Stephanie could have been a, the one on the radio pretending to be, you know, whatever. Right, But then that gives, oh, shit, never mind. I can't even talk about this. <laughs> I know too much. I know, I know too much. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> but, um, Anyway, so yeah, beginning of the episode, Eugene's sleeping. He wakes up. He turns over. Stephanie is in his bed. I'm I, Stephanie, not Stephanie. Is too much. That's too much of a mouthful. Stephanie is in his bed, and she's reading his manuscript of his science fiction novel that he finally got around to writing, and she loves it. She, you know, she seems like really happy and giddy, and you know, she kisses him, and she gets ready for work, and then he goes into this whole thing about giving her a key to his apartment because he wants to see more of her and her expression when she comes over and sits on the bed like she's looking at him and she grabs the key like oh my god oh my god is this and then he was like Stephanie I love you I was like I felt so happy that he finally felt comfortable or he finally found someone that he felt he could say that to but then at the same time it's like when she's I guess because she hesitated and she could have hesitated for a lot of reasons. If we didn't already think that she was something was hinky about her. Right. She could have, she could have just hesitated because she was like, Oh my God, I wasn't expecting him to say it this, this quickly. Or it could have been one of those things where she had to think like, do I love him? Because sometimes people don't think about that until they're in that moment. They're like, Oh wait, I really do love this person. Or, you know, 
what we see a lot. Somebody gets proposed to and the, and the girl is like, no, I can't marry you. It's like in that moment, you realize this is not the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. So she could have been hesitating for any one of those reasons. Oh. But she does tell him, I love you too. And, you know, he leaves happy and she's all giggly at the fire escape telling him bye. And he goes to see his BFF princess, which I'm loving this Eugene princess friendship. I just love princess with everybody. Like yeah. her personality, whether it's her shooting her shot with Mercer or being a true friend to Eugene or convincing Ezekiel to take his ass to the doctor because, yo, dude, they have hospitals here. Go get seen about. You know, I just love her character and what she brings to this group. But she's there and she's encouraging him. And she's like, yeah, if a girl tells you that she loves you, believe her. And he's like, well, we're supposed to meet for ice cream at 1730 and blah, blah, blah. And he goes there and he's sitting with the ice cream cones, the waffle cones at the table. And this cheesy romantic music plays, which is, girl, that music was, it was, it was sweet if you think about the music away from the show but it just uh-huh. added a little bit of a of a cringy element to it it's kind of like oh you know this is not gonna go well it's like one of those songs that play like when you own a um it start off real sweet and then it gets to it slows down yes. to that slow creepy yes. ass like you like is this the same damn song mm-hmm. yes that's exactly what it did mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. sitting there with a two melted ass I, in the same position two mil Oh, I felt so I felt so bad oh, for him but then he goes to her apartment and he's knocking on the door because her light is on it's dark at this point he has literally sat out all day and waited for her it's dark her light is on in her apartment he finds a way to get into the building because of course it's a it's a secure building there's a guy who's walking out the door and as he walks out he's not paying attention to what's on the right of him he's looking straight ahead so eugene sneaks in he starts banging on the door stephanie is eugene stephanie are you there and then the camera pans into her nice ass apartment and we see stephanie you know putting clothes in a suitcase very frantically now this is the thing i did not pay attention to the first time i watched it and then when i was watching it a few minutes ago i was like wait a minute so If she knew she was going to, you know, ghost him and kind of leave, don't you think she would have done that while she was supposedly at work? That part. Instead of waiting until the nighttime when you know he's going to come looking for you. That didn't make sense to me. Oh, no. Because, you know, remember she, so she had to go find a mover to move her stuff. She had to go to her job to put in her notice. She had to, uh, who, who else he saw? But see, she didn't do you know, any of had- that stuff. She didn't do any of that stuff until after he reported her missing. Because remember, he was we already- t- that. No, we do. Because he was taught when he was telling Princess about, um, you know, his, his suspicions. Remember, she came to his apartment and he had the, he had the who done it board up on his wall. Mm-hmm. And he says when the when the CA or the, the Commonwealth Authority um stopped looking for Stephanie, I had to take it into my own hands. And he was talking about how um he confronted the plumber guy, the bald headed plumber guy. He says when when he talks to him, he says 24 hours ago you came out of this building and blah, blah, blah. So that was already the day after. And then after that was when her stuff got moved. And then we don't find out that she actually um, withdrew from her job until after Eugene gets caught and Lance comes to talk to him and uh, Princess in the jail. Because remember when he went to her job to look for her, the dude was like, I was told to come in because she called in sick. And Eugene was like, is there a record of her calling sick or something like that? He was like, dude, I was just told to show up. Right. So we don't know when she did all of that stuff. That stuff could have just been put in there just to throw Eugene off the scent. Like, okay, yeah. So because it was all really 
convenient that Lance walked in with all of these papers. Oh yeah, the dude is a plumber and that's a certificate and they have a contract with the Commonwealth. And oh yes, yeah, Stephanie asked for a transfer from her job. Here's the paperwork. Like and, and he even says it to Princess, he says, how is their paperwork of her transferring her job when they said originally that she she didn't, she called in? Mm-hmm. You know, like, how is it all of a sudden, oh, she requested the transfer, that's why the dude was there. It's just a lot of things didn't add up. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking about that. I was like, she had the whole day, the whole day, because 1730, that's 530. You had the whole day to pack a suitcase because you didn't take your furniture and stuff with you when you left because Rosita and them went into the apartment to look for her. Oh, your yeah, shit was there. So she had the whole day. Why wait until the nighttime when you know, you know, at this point, fake or not, you know, fake love, real love, whatever, you know, Eugene inside and out by this point. That's true. You know he gonna come looking for you when you didn't show up for that date. So why would you wait until the nighttime? And I'm kind of like, I know that the way it seemed at the end of the episode, because of course Eugene goes looking for her and we'll, we'll talk about his little escapades then, but she is actually the person that he sees that makes him realize that, oh, she was never missing. This, is a, this whole thing was a farce because- yeah. He he gets into the little uh, plumber warehouse hideout, wherever they are, and he attacks one of the guys that's there. And then he gets attacked with a drop kick to the stomach. And it was Stephanie, not Stephanie, who did that. And when she was going upstairs, the way she looked at him at first, I thought she was looking at him with a lot of disdain. But when I looked at it again, she almost is looking at him with pity, like, I didn't want to hurt you, but this is what you made me do because do you, you also, because you were you're being too nosy. You should have just took it as I left and been done with it. But you know what? And, and in that, and even in that same scene, my thought was: Did she know it was him? She just knows her friend was being attacked. No, she. I, don't, I think she. You think she knew it was him? Do you? I think so. I don't think so because my thought was she knew. The, the she knew her she heard a commotion mm-hmm. you hear a commotion because remember eugene had a little spray bottle so she heard a commotion right and then eugene jumped on him or whatever so she comes to i don't think she knew it was him honestly I, i'm gonna tell because you why at, i think she did that moment that she's trying to figure you know save her friend so to speak that's when she got, it wasn't like she looked at him to the same, like, hey, you did, and then kicked them. You no. know what I mean? In my mind, it's just her trying to save her friend. I'm going to tell you why I think she knew it was him. One, Lance would have already told her that Eugene broke into the guy's apartment thinking that she was missing. He would have already told her that. Okay. Two, even though Eugene was facing the dude and he was fighting him, she came at him from behind. I'm sorry, if this is somebody that I have been intimate with, to the point where the relationship was comfortable for us to say, I love you to each other, even though she was faking it. I'm going to know what he looks like from every angle. I'm going to be able to pick him out of a crowd. I'm just being dead serious. Right. I'm just being dead serious. If you're that intimate with somebody, you can pick them out of a crowd. Or if you know somebody, it's Eugene. That's true. If Lance (laughs) has already told her, Hey, so let me tell you about your boy, Eugene. I don't know what you did to him, but (laughs) this dude then used the garbage can to climb up the fire escape to break into this dude's apartment. And he is not giving up. He knows that something is not right. Lance would have told her that. And her knowing Eugene... She should have expected that he was not going to give up until he had a satisfactory answer. Sure. Sure. I mean, you've spent all of this time infiltrating this man. Like you have gotten into his heart. You have pulled on every emotional string there is. You have learned every little thing about him. 
you knew he was going to come looking for you and you knew he was not going to stop until he knew where you were. You know, Eugene was the one who put up all those 50 million missing (laughs) posters in the Commonwealth. Don't nobody else care about her that much. Right. I don't even think people really know who she is. Right. You know? Not that much to have a wanted poster. Right. uh, Not wanted, but... um, Missing, yeah. Missing. So she knew he was going to come after her. She knew it. Nobody else would have... I mean, think about it. You have been operating whatever this is y'all are operating out of that building. Y'all have been doing that for who knows how long and nobody has bothered y'all. And all of a sudden you have an intruder. What's the one factor that's changed in that? You You ghosted the one person you should not ghost because Eugene is like a hound dog looking for a bone. Swear to God. That was that was their mistake because they that underestimated they that underestimated Eugene. Mm-hmm. They underestimated how much he was gonna be like. Oh no, I can't let this go. You know, I think they probably thought, oh, okay, this is like zombie apocalypse. People are used to losing people all the time. It's also probably because of that that Eugene would not give up on her, especially considering. Okay, let's just be honest. We all know Eugene was a virgin. You don't just wake up with a beautiful woman in your bed and that's just still platonic, especially if it's to the point y'all have been together long enough that you gave her a key to your apartment and y'all have exchanged those three words. For someone like Eugene. That's a lot. Not Yeah, and not saying it in a bad way, but you really think he's just going to let that go and just be like, oh, okay, she slept with me. She told me she loved me and then she just bounced. You will not and, oh. use Eugene Porter. You will not. No, no. Is that even about to go down like that? Uh-uh. I mean, think about it. If Negan couldn't use him and he was scared to death of Negan. But again, thinking back now, <laughs> when he got the apartment, when he got the pickles, if you look at the way Eugene was thinking, like we looked at it back then like Eugene saying oh you know what I got it made this is what I'm about to do I'm about to be here because I don't have to I don't have to fight I don't have to worry about people messing with me I don't No, Eugene was like oh I got a way to work this into my favor yeah let me get him to trust me no Gabriel you can't help me make these bullets because you're gonna mess the bullets up and you steady in there fucking them bullets up it was you the whole time Right. So I, I think very differently about Eugene now when I go back and rewatch the episodes, knowing what I know about him now, I right. go back and I look at them and they're like little subtle things that are there. And it's like, oh, I had that totally wrong. Right. I really feel that. But again, knowing how Eugene thinks, she should have known he was going to come look for her. And I think, I'm going to be honest, I think Lance expected it. Really? I think he expected it. I mean, because the way that, and, and and here's the thing about him too, the way he sat there and listened to Eugene's whole tirade, his facial expression did not change. Not a once. That dude is a sociopath. He is a sociopath. Duh. He's just sitting there looking at Eugene like, <laughs> okay. Because when Eugene was like, I'm going to tell my people about who you are and what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, go right ahead. I was like, yeah. Like this a Chucky doll. Like a Chucky doll. That permanent plastic Girl. ass. Yeah. He's creepy. That he is. And then he went through that whole spiel. And he was still just that same creepy. Am I, you know, do I feel bad that you got your heart broken? Absolutely. <laughs> and you did this to though. yourself. I told you to let it go. And by the way, her name is Shira. She hates Iron Maiden, but she loved your book. You should keep it up. I was like, can we punch you in the face, please, sir? Creepy. Creepy. Even even that whole um even that whole little excursion he went on with Carol. 
you know, to to go see the guy, you know, uh, apparently there are other small communities that I guess are a part of Commonwealth, but are not a part of the Commonwealth. And they exist outside of the walls. And this particular group, they grow the poppies for the opium, for the hospital. And they have an arrangement with Lance that they provide the poppies and he pays them for their services. Well, apparently this dude is not paying his workers the money that yeah, he's not paying the wor- the workers the money that they were promised. He's taking it and then he's beating them to keep them quiet. And Lance has taken Carol with him to kind of suss this situation out because he's like, yeah, I, I kind of need you to help me deal with this asshole. And he's still saying it kind of with that weird smile and <laughs> all the while trying to convince Carol about, you know, y- don't call it your people and my people it needs to be our people. I want you to be a part of this and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, something is not right about this dude. But Carol is not fooled, I don't think. Because Carol's sitting there, she's talking to him. And then he's, when he says all that stuff, she turns to the side and she gives this little smile. I was like, here she go. (laughs) Here she go pretending like, oh yeah, I'm smart, but I'm not as smart as you I know. I don't know what's going on. What's his name? But he knows that she's smart. The most wonderful way. Yeah, but he knows that she's smart because he said it was in her file. He was like, I know you're smart. I know you're resourceful. And if you're a person that pays attention to people like the way I feel Lance pays attention to people, I think Lance is one of those people watchers. Like he watches people very intricately to see what makes them tick how they move, how they operate. And I think with the way Carol approached him, you know, she's out there in the shadows and she sees something that he needs and all of a sudden she provides it. He knows Carol is smarter than she appears to be. He True. knows that, you know? And he's like, okay, I'm gonna take you with me to, to deal with this asshole. And at first, you know, him and Moto are just sitting there fishing and they're talking and Carol's just kind of there to the side and Carol just kind of looks back at the women she turns back around and when she looks back again one of the women has a bandage on her arm and she covers it up with her hands and i think carol having been a domestic abuse survivor she recognizes the signs Mm -hmm. so she tells lance later on she you know he's like so so what you got for me and she said he's taking them he's taking the raises that you promised them and he's keeping them for himself and he's beating them to keep quiet he went too far the other day and they're on strike. That's why they're on strike. I was like, okay, so, you know, Car- Carol's showing her worth. You know, she's showing Lance, yeah, I can be a valuable asset because this is money that you've promised these other people. They're not getting it. He is. Right. But Lance makes this promise. He says, tell them they'll get their money. And then some, I think he said, then he has Moto arrested, which, what did he say? Mother cum bucket. Mother puss bucket. That's what it was. Mother puss bucket. He definitely went to the Abraham school swearing. But I think also too, that's because, you know, they can only say the F word so many times in an episode, but it's just, it's so weird. I don't think I've ever heard them say fuck. Um, Rosita said it in the what was it the first episode when they were fighting the walkers on the stairs she said fuck uh-huh. because uh while they were filming Lydia accidentally hit her with the staff in the face and she said fuck but they kept they kept going and they kept it in I'm gonna have to go back and look at that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. look yeah. my ears be like okay yeah All but right. um Going back to that, going back to Lance, going back to Lance, that dude, um, yeah, something's not quite right with him. And, and I still feel like even after everything that we see with Eugene and this reveal at the end, you know, Lance, Lance is this, this fifth person that Eugene sees going in and out of this warehouse, the mastermind, the mastermind. And we still never figure out exactly what it is that he's doing there. I'm still kind of 
playing the Taurus, he might be part of the resistance. Because again, if you think about the interactions we've seen with him and Pamela Milton and him and even Pamela's assistant, Max, who we find out is the real person that Eugene was talking to on the radio, they talk to him with a lot of disdain. You know, they kind of turn their nose down at him and Pamela Milton is very dismissive of him. And I have a feeling he's one of those people that's like, you are not going to treat me this way. You know, and he says it to Carol. He says, you know, I've proved myself. I proved myself to the Milton family years ago. My question is how, what, what did you do? Right. Because you may have proved yourself to the Milton family, but there's obviously one Milton who does not really care about you, who does not like you. So I'm just kind of wondering. He's trying so hard to win her ass over. Like he is super trying to, I'm sure I'm 99.9% sure there's an ulterior motive. Of course. It's like he is trying super hard to win this. She is just like, because at first I thought they was going to, I thought they was. (laughs) You can't talk about the next episode yet. Jesus. I know, I know. But yeah, he he just, he just seems as though. Yeah, he he definitely has an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what it is, I think, sooner rather than later. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, because I think I think that's probably going to play into the last half of this part of the season and leading into that final eight episodes whatever whatever it is that lance is doing if it has something to do with the commonwealth resistance um yeah i I think his motives will be clear sometime soon because it's like it's almost like one of those things he's like one of the what is the expression he's like a powder keg about to go off it's Mm -hmm. just kind of like you know again like that fake smile and he's just yeah he's just all chipper and it's just really creepy and it's just kind of like oh my god what are we doing it's just I don't know he's he strikes me as very weird now I appreciate him for the things he can do you know because (laughs) Carol's helping him I'm sure he I'm pretty sure he's about to help my boy uh Ezekiel out so you can be creepy as long as that gets done first and then you can show your true colors whatever just just take care of my boo first that's all well, we already know boo ain't got no spin off let me quit playing with you <laughs> i hate you so much right now <laughs> aaron ain't got no spin off either just saying anyway <laughs> um, Let's you move on that, to the. You want that so shut bad. up! Shut up! Let's move on to the next so interesting bad. part of the episode, real quick. Let's talk about Connie, because baby, let me tell you, Connie, I can see the tenacity that made her an investigative journalist pre-apocalypse, because we start out this ep- we start out her part of the episode. She and Kelly are in the I guess this is the newspaper offices and the editor is approving the print to go to press and connie is like this ain't what i wrote this ain't this ain't approved no why are we printing this she was like there's a bigger story to tell tyler davis took a hostage in front of a room full of people to make his voice heard aren't you at least a little bit interested in what he has to say and the editor's like nope i'm like oh you know what She must have been one of those people that got paid off because I don't know if you noticed it, but at the end of the party, when Yumiko was walking around with the papers, she was making people sign non-disclosure agreements and they were paying them cash. And I was like, so this really does work in a post-apocalyptic world. Like, y'all still really dealing with money the way that it was before. Like, I don't know something about that, you know, I like the Commonwealth for what it is as far as as far as it being a safe haven for people, as far as them being able to go back to kind of sort of the way the world was before. But there are certain aspects of it that's just weird. And it comes along with that whole classism debate from that second episode, because 
who determines people's worth? Like, I remember they asked people, um, you know, when they do their intake, what were you before the world <laughs> fell? And judging by what we saw at the carnival and at the dinner, they are putting these people in these same positions. So if you were a blue collar worker, they put you right back in that space and they're treating you as such. I mean, think about the apartment that Daryl and Rosita were in as they were trainees. That apartment was horrible. That apartment was worse than some slums I've seen. Hello. You know? Hello. Oh, it's just... I don't know, something about the Commonwealth is, is kind of like that whole... And my thought is, because if Yumiko was passing out cash and the opioid workers are getting... Where, where they, they in the woods now. Where are they spending cash at? Like, they're getting raises. Their raises constitute real money. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're separate from the Commonwealth. So where are you spending money at? Right. Like, honestly, you know, honestly, where are you spending money? Like cash. If they have cash, where, where are you spending this money at? Right. Because if you think about it with our communities, with Hilltop, uh, Alexandria, um, the kingdom, they didn't use a cash bartering system. They At traded all. goods and services, you know? Right. Um, so, and, and I, I wouldn't think that there's another, maybe another smaller community around the Commonwealth. Cause it seems like they started as a small community and they grew. So I'm, I'm guessing whatever else was out there, they started absorbing it, you know, into this one mega city. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like the CRM did you know but yeah. I, don't just think, I, I don't know it's just it's very weird the, yeah. the whole way they they conduct business it's like you're trying to hold on to this broken old system way. right because the system the was way. broken before the zombies ever came about right the system was broken why would you want to but then again but then again if you think about it Look at the people who are in charge. Look at the people who are in charge. Because yeah. I mean, even, even for someone who has a high position within his um within his job, you know, being Mercer, he's still in service. Mm -hmm. If you know, you you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The two people that are kind of sort of right there at the top are Pamela Milton and Lance Hornsby. And Pamela Milton is way more if they're like, she is really, she plays that part. What? She, play, yes, she, she plays that, you know, I am the, I am the person who leads everything and you are my little people. And, and even, I mean, even just with the, um, with the gala, you could see that because of one of the way that Tyler had to win a lottery to go if you weren't part of the upper class. You had to win a lottery. Oh, this is our lottery winner. For, and then, because even at the, um, for the little kids, that was the prize for yes. winning the costume contest, some lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. Yes, they didn't play the lottery. Yeah. But this is your prize. Oh, hope, hope you can get a taste of this good life. Right. Oh, speaking of which, since you mentioned it, um, how cute was Kari Payton's daughter as the little Mercer? I didn't find that out until afterwards. I was like, oh, she's adorable. But yeah, that was, that's cute. I love it. I love it seeing them put their own like children in there. Cause remember we had um, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan had his son as a walker in yep. one of the earlier episodes. So that's, that's always fun. But um, yeah, I, I don't know this, this. So anyway, Connie is trying to, basically say look this tyler davis guy he obviously has something to say he's talked about there being thousands of people in this so-called resistance don't you want to know what's going on and her editor was like no you're gonna print what i tell you to print and she said something about 
she said something about not trusting something. And Connie said, I wouldn't trust them any more than I trust the government. And what does she do? She sends Connie on an assignment to shadow Mercer and the rest of the guards. Now let's talk about these guards because I know we talked about them so bad on Sunday. So we have to reiterate that since all of that got lost. Um, them is the sorry yes them is the sorry them two, yes them two was the, the they just picked two motherfuckers and be like, hey put this suit on come be a walker i mean come be a, come be military because you are covered in head to toe in plastic or well, i'm assuming it's not plastic for them it's foam or whatever the fuck it is but you are literally covered head to toe why is you running from walkers why I mean, I get that there were a lot of them and you can't get overwhelmed, but still it's like when he falls down in the walkers doing all of this, dude, you are covered. Why are you sitting there? Ah, ah. Like, like, like to, we, to we, we killed off Carl for this shit. To go to the contrast <laughs> of how our survivors have made it through walkers. Right. No covering. No, no extra padding, no guns, none of Card, the cardboard on the hands with a, with a with a uh, a shirt wrapped around them. For again, we've had none of these luxuries. We've had our team in Alexandria full of walkers. After Carl got shot in his fucking eye, Rick took his ass outside and started whooping ass, and then everybody's following along. How many guns was out there? None. None. Who had had no no goddamn None. body? None. But your ass got about ten walkers around you, and your head to head to toe. Let's not even and, talk. Let's forget all the fucking grown folks. Judith fucking Grimes. When she ran off, and Michonne found her, what was she doing? She was killing walkers. With her little bitty toothpick sword, according to Sebastian. His ass. And y'all can't... Really? Y'all have Shut to get up. my man Mercer all covered up in blood with that orange with that orange suit just all dotted, looking like this. And you just sitting there looking like, oh, oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's Man, if you don't go there. sit your ass down somewhere and look you the one that needs to be demoted to serving drinks on a tray at a gala because what because you couldn't even save yourself not if, if forget the the person you put in the car you couldn't save yourself and then couldn't even get the car door closed sat there trying to push the car door you have walkers coming after you let him worry about the car door he's already inside it looked like he just couldn't walk. He his hands were he couldn't. But even if he did it, you are covered from, from head, head to, to toe. toe. What the? F- I was looking at them like I'm. Done. I'm like, okay, I've never he, fought a zombie, and I could do better than that. Come on now. When he um, when he um stabbed the zombie with the stick from the back of the van, why you let go of the stick? Why, why would you let go of the stick? You keep the stick and you keep stabbing. But hey, what do I know? I'm going to say never, this. And I've never, I didn't even go through the zombie house that Mercer was overseeing. So clearly his ass didn't need it. So this is kind of what I think, like the military, they look good, you know, with their stormtrooper outfits. They look good with their guns or whatever. But I think when it comes to like being practical, because if you're isolated all the time, you're not really facing no real threats. True. And they're not. Not in the Commonwealth. No, no one's ever breached the Commonwealth wall. No walkers. You got to go down to the south side or to the west side or wherever they were sending people to be able to encounter some damn walkers. Right. You know what I mean? And that was, I think, outside of the walls. You know, I, I'm I'm guessing those are buildings that they're probably going to repurpose and rebuild, and then they're going to make the borders around those, like bring right. those within the borders. But which I get, which I get. But until 
send some more motherfuckers down there. Show them how to kill. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right. your, training got, your training got to be better than what the fuck y'all sending them through this little ass house. Right. Because everybody, everybody on, you know, our, our, t- our team, they've been out here kicking ass. And then to see you, so that's why it's weird to see Daryl in the military. Like, nigga, you know how to kill, kill. Like, what? I, I can't even, he looked weird as hell with a gun. Give his ass a fucking cross spot. Like, even though he got the little military jumpsuit on, give his ass a cross spot. I just, I don't know. I kind of feel like for someone like Daryl and maybe even somebody like Rosita, I mean, Rosita, okay, I will say this. Rosita is a chameleon. She is going to fit into whatever situation you put her in. You've seen that from day one. She's a chameleon. If y'all want to make her a a guard and put her in this suit, she's going to rock it and she's going to be the best she can be. Daryl, I feel like that suit is going to slow him down. And it's like, I know he's not going to die because he does have that spinoff coming up. But, you know, there's been all this debate about who Sebastian is going to kill, like who's getting Rick's death in the comics. If I didn't know that Daryl was getting a spinoff, I would, at this point, I would kind of think it was him because I feel like that suit is going to hinder him. It's yeah. it's going to, like, he can't move the way that he moves. Like the way we saw him fighting in Meridian when him and that guy, uh, you know, were fighting each other in the little classroom space. Mm-hmm. The way that he was kind of flexible and he was dodging and he was moving, he can't do that in that suit. Hell no. He's going to get his ass fucked up. Right. And he's, he's not Chris used to that. <laughs> right. Right. But I, I don't know. It's just... I, I just yeah, have... Some of the stuff kind of, as a viewer, frustrates you, especially since we've been on this journey for so long. So it's like, at this point, we should have super soldiers. You, you, you know what I mean? You've been in the apocalypse for 37 years at this point. It, it shouldn't be <laughs> as hard or as scary or as, you know, you understand what I'm saying? But, it's you like, know, it, I think. For so long, like, goddamn. But I think, it, I think it, it, it serves to show also how naive the Commonwealth can be. And I mean, again, we, we're only seeing bits and pieces of it so far. Like we're still getting to know the Commonwealth, but it's almost like the way Alexandria was, you know, like, yeah, they would send people out to scavenge and they never really got into any hardcore situations, which is why Nicholas reacted the way he did and Aiden reacted the way that they did when they got confronted on that, that final run that resulted in Aiden and Noah's death. They weren't used to that, you know, and even we found out later on, they had something like that happen to them once before. And what did they do? They left their, they left their people to die and they ran and, you know, covered their own ass. They're not used to. And I think that's kind of one of the things that they're showing us with the Commonwealth. Like, yeah, the Commonwealth, they're organized, they're detailed. They have a lot of stuff together, but when you look at it, beneath the surface they're not as experienced as our people and you know the funny thing is a friend of mine um charles who does sci-fi party line uh the other podcast that i do sometimes he commented and he said you know what happens when our people join a group or when they join a community shit's about to fall apart he was like, because anytime somebody invites our people in, shit starts to fall apart. I was like, that's because our people see through the bullshit. And they're looking at it like Rick was looking like, how many, you you remember what, what he said? How many of y'all have to die before you understand? Like, this is not, this is not a Halloween haunted house that you are facing out there. You are actually facing real threats. And if you're not prepared for it, you're going to get hurt and you're going to die. And I think that this, that was to show us like, yeah, these people have these, they have this armor and they have these guns and they have this discipline and this presence. But when it comes to the important stuff, that shit don't matter. You either have to do it or you don't. 
And I think a lot of these soldiers don't. When it comes to goddamn fighting walkers. Right. Now, Mercer, on the other hand, (laughs) Mercer is marking them left, right. Like, he's got the decorations all over his suit, even on the back. I I remember I was talking on Sunday. I said, how did he get the blood on his back? Like, how is it splattered on his back? And Casey was like, well, the axe he's using when he does like this is splattering on his back. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll buy that. Oh, and I stand corrected. They don't have no armor on the back of their legs. Remember his little booty cup? <laughs> and so on the back of his legs, it's no armor on the back of his legs. But he fell, the, the walker fell on him anyway. Yeah, because they had they do have the guards on the front of their thighs. So it's kind of like uh that walker would be ha- having to do some maneuvering to sit there and bite them. Like I just I, I don't know. May, maybe they feel like it's not really needed back there because that means somebody has to come at you from behind and somebody's supposed to be watching your six, right? So that technically shouldn't happen. But again, these are... I get it. Yeah, but like I said, these are kind of unexperienced soldiers or whatever, and they end up in situations like Tyler Davis where they <laughs> confront the wrong person and they get their ass beat and then they get a demotion. And then moving on to his part of the story so connie goes to the hospital after you know she has this confrontation with her editor and the editor is like yeah we're not we're not pursuing this story you're going to print what i tell you to print connie goes to the hospital so that she could try to talk to tyler davis and he's in the hospital and, and again apparently he got injured during the capture which i don't remember but okay oh no 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 i know what it was he didn't get injured. They had him in there for observation because of his so-called PTSD. Remember, that's what the editor told Connie because Connie was like, yeah, Tyler Davis said such and such. She said, we have sworn statements from his doctor talking about his PTSD. That's why he was in the hospital because he was supposedly being treated for that. Okay. He was under guard because he threatened somebody and they attributed that to his PTSD from getting yes. his ass whipped by Princess. Princess. So she oh, goes okay. to the whole, yeah, That's she goes to the room. You know, I was confused as hell. Like, what yeah. the fuck happened to him to he in the hospital? Yeah, Dad. no, it was it was supposed to be to treat his PTSD. So Connie and Kelly, they go to the hospital and they ask the guard about him. And the guard is like, he can't have any visitors. And when Connie tries to, per, you know, pursue it, she's like, I'm from the Tribune, blah, blah, blah. He go Mercer opening the door. He just looks at her and closes the door something tells me there's more going on to mercer than him being just the the lead the lead military person because yeah. some of the stuff he says like when he was talking to daryl in the last episode and he was you know of course he's walking around making that little mean mugging face and you know saying his stuff under his breath to daryl but i feel like he actually respects daryl yeah you know and and rosita too because he can see what what they've done it's just a matter of now you guys are part of a community you have to think about the community at whole which my personal opinion is that's probably going to be part of their downfall because you can't trust everybody in that community to have your back because that they're obviously not on the same skill set right but anyway so after this little exchange, we see Connie and Kelly going to one of the military convoys with Mercer. And apparently Connie has been put on an assignment to shadow the military guard because, you know, like she said, I don't trust the military. So the the editor is like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to send you out here so you can see what they do. So this oh, is- Oh, you don't like them, huh? Huh? She said, oh, you don't like them, huh? So you're going to shout on. So after the debacle with the guards and Mercer having to come save them, he approaches Connie and Kelly, you know, all bloodied up and everything. (laughs) Did you see Kelly's look? She looked at him like, oh, okay. (laughs) You don't wipe off none of that, huh? Right. (laughs) So he comes up to uh, Connie and basically says, did you see, did you see what you need to see? And she was like, yeah, I saw enough. And she says, what is Tyler? Uh, oh, no. He says, 
then this is the part where you ask the questions they told you they gave you to ask me so he already knows what the deal is and of course Connie's like okay whatever I want to know what's going on with Tyler Davis like why is he in the hospital why is he because he's been there a month that's what the, she said. He's been in there a month. Why has he been in there a month? Why does he have an armed guard? Why can he not have visitors? Like, what's going on? And she was like, don't you see that there's something else going on? She was like, you were the one who recommended him for promotion. Now, does this have anything to do with the fact that the hostage that he took is your, your sister? sister? And what he said? I was wondering when you was going to figure that out. Right. But he said, but just to let you know, my sister ain't got a damn thing to do with this oh okay so you you feeling some kind of way about that okay but after she asked the question she says something about um you know doesn't it make you wonder what the government is trying to hide and he said don't you think it should make you wonder about asking questions that you know you are never going to get answers to and he walks off and she's looking at him like what Again, Mercer knows there's some shit going on, but Mercer's like, you know what? I got a nice position. He probably got a nice apartment. He's the celebrity he of Commonwealth. He's probably like, look, I'm staying out of this. People get some good jail mail. <laughs> no, he went because Princess would put a stop to that real quick. <laughs> okay. Okay. Child. But, um, you know, after she asks him these questions, he goes back to the hospital and goes to Tyler's room and the room is completely empty. So he goes around to the charge nurse and he asks her, he's like, uh, where's the prisoner that was in room such and such? And she just looks at him and says, there, there is no patient in, in that room. And he says, I can see that. Where was he moved to? He can't be moved without my authorization. And she said, apparently he can. I was like, ooh. Oh, and of course he gets mad. He punches a hole in the wall and he walks off. But I guess Mercer is figuring out that he ain't necessarily the HNIC when it comes to the military. Like Come somebody on. is over him and somebody has the pull to say, okay, yeah, we're going to move this person. Now, my question is, was it Pamela Milton because of the threat that he poses to the Commonwealth? No. Or was it Lance? It was Lance removing him for that same reason possibly or because tyler is part of the resistance and maybe lance is too you know that's my theory it's like there are so many there are so many different ways that this can play because lance could also have taken tyler and been like okay you know what i'm not a member of the resistance but I realized that I might be able to use you, especially if he's making a power play, which I kind of sort of feel like he is. Because again, Pamela does not treat him with respect. Right. And just listening to the way that he was talking to Carol when they were on their way to the little settlement, he said, you know, I didn't always start at the top. And Carol said, is that where you are now? Like, are you at the top? He was like, well, I'm, nope. he was like, Pamela is at the top. She runs the town, but I know how things are run. You know, it's kind of like that. Um, you always had he he's like the Jafar uh, of, of the group. Like, yeah, I'm I'm the sidekick, I'm the trusty sidekick, but when the time comes, I'm about to overthrow this shit. Right. That's the vibe I get from him. And I feel like he's using these people like. He says something to Eugene about when, when Eugene finally confronts him and says, you used her to get, to get to me. You used her to pull at my heartstrings to make me reveal things to you that I never would have revealed. Because before, when they were questioning him, he was like, I didn't break. I didn't break it. He was so proud of that fact. He was like, I know you thought I was going to break, but I did not break. But then when Stephanie got involved, that's when things changed. And of course, the whole thing with him punching um, Sebastian, he had to kind of give up something in order to avoid his people just being left out in, there in the cold. And, and Lance says it to him. He was like, yeah, we used her to get to you. But, you know, he was like, I think it worked out for everybody. 
He was like, we got you guys here. You guys are getting Alexandria fixed. And all we ask of you is to be productive members of our society while you choose to stay here. And I was like, he very specifically said that word, choose to stay here. So it's not like they're being forced to stay. It's not like they're being held captive. Apparently they have the ability to leave if and when they want. And this is the thing that he kind of dangles over Eugene's head. He was like, if you want to go tell your people about what, what you think I did, go tell them. He was like, y'all can go back out there and fend for yourselves. I don't know how, I, you know, I hope you remember what that was like when we got there. But if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. And of course, I think Eugene, at this point, he's kind of like, fuck. It's like, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to tell all my friends. Right. But you got to think about those friends. You have Hirsch. Well, not Hirsch. I'm sorry. You have RJ, you have Judith and you have Coco all there. You just going to send the, you just going to send the kids back out just because you got your feelings hurt. At least figure out what it is that Lance is doing before you make that decision. You know, I, I think he will be. Yeah. Yeah. But that poor child, He's sitting there. He um he takes down his little who done it board and he burns it. And he burns his manuscript. And as he's burning the manuscript, here comes this little girl walking up to the gate. Eugene, I need to talk to you. And he's just ignoring her. And then she says, Taterbug, Taterbug, this is Blue Weevil, or Taterbug to Blue Weevil. I can't remember which was which. And he kind of perks up and he looks at her. He was like, who are you? And then she's like, it's me. It's me. It's I'm the person you were talking to on the radio. And it's Max, Pamela Milton's assistant, which we already knew thanks to closed captioning, ruining that for us like way back in the beginning of the season. Well, see, I don't use closed captioning. So it didn't mean anything. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old and I'm blind and I can't hear all that <laughs> great So. <laughs> So I use it, but um, so yeah, we have this whole new thing now because here's the person that Eugene really was talking to. So how did the other person get all the information? And that's going to be a whole interesting conversation. I feel because um, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, think no, about no. it. You just got your heart ripped out, and now you find out that the person who ripped your heart out isn't even the person you thought it was. Like, I know Eugene is like, you know what? The one time I fall in love and this shit happens, I'm not doing this no more. He's going to be like, down. look, we say resist the Commonwealth. He's going to be like down with love or something because this just ain't working out for him. It's not. Child. But, and, and, and the poor thing, and, and the thing is, poor princess, she tried to tell him. You know, she she went on him with that. She went with him to that little excursion to the dude's um, apartment. And when they got caught, she was upset. But then when they got let go, because Lance made Eugene sign a piece of paper saying that he was emotionally distraught over his missing girlfriend and he acted without thought and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And even after all of that, he's still trying to be like, okay, yeah, well, I'm still going to go look for her. And Princess is like, dude, she just, she left you. She broke up with you. Well, you told me that if a woman says, I love you to believe it. Yeah, well, you know what? If she quits her job and she moves away and don't tell you, believe that too. Believe that too. Because <laughs> you're going through all that, bruh, bruh. All right. But it's like now, now that I think about it, I'm looking at it in the background where he's uh, he's relaying the information to um, Princess about who's coming in and out the building. And you see the group of people standing in shadow. One of mm-hmm. them is lighting a cigarette. I believe that's Lance. And then the person mm-hmm. next to him is Stephanie. And her mm-hmm. hair is just ever so, it's just ever so slightly different. But she doesn't have the glasses. But mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, she didn't have them glasses when she whooped his ass. Nope. <laughs> she didn't. And like I said, the way she looked at him after she kicked him, it was almost like, oh, like she was mad at him. I'm like, why are you mad at him? You were the one who was a spy. He came to find you, bitch. 
You can't get a man nowadays to return your text. You had a whole man come to find you. <laughs> but not only that, you were the one who, who drew him in. You were the one who played at his heart. You were the one who ended up in his bed. And then you're gonna get mad that he's still looking for you. This man ain't never had nothing. How old is he? 40, 40 years. He ain't had nothing. In 40 years, you gave him a little, a little tea drop before. And he's like, I need some more of that. You ain't just gonna leave and quit your job and move on the other side of town. No. So clearly the town is big enough that she can put in a job transfer and go someplace else. Well, you know, I think they said something about that that whole little plumber unit was on the outskirts of the Commonwealth. Like that, I think it's a part of the Commonwealth, but also not a part of the main Commonwealth. I think, like, and I don't know if that's actually what it is or if that's just what he told Eugene to kind of say. Okay, you know what? We are not part of because if he's doing something in secret, then naturally that's not going to be a part of the Commonwealth. Right. You know, it's, well, it's still like, within the walls, though. I think it's still within the walls. Could be, yeah. But uh, I'm telling you that Lance got something going on. Oh, absolutely. Duh. I knew that the first time I met him with that creepy, do the smile again. The, yeah, with that smile. So, yeah, his creepy. Uh, no, it's not even that wide. It's just. Yep, that's it. That one right there. No, no, no. no not, am, am, I, am I sorry that you got your heart broken? Absolutely. Like his eyes don't move, his eyebrows don't move. His it, it's weird. It's almost like he's just <laughs> stuck there. Mm -hmm. Creepy face. It's so creepy, but that's how you know that motherfucker sociopath. Because he he, he's giving off those vibes. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at if you look at the um, the preview for the next episode, I was like, oh, wait a minute now. Things are really about to get like weird because they, they, they go to Alexandria the next episode. We get Maggie in the next episode. We get Aaron. So obviously Aaron did stay behind to help oversee uh, the Commonwealth rebuilding Alexandria. So that answers that question, but still it's kind of like, uh, I'm just worried for my people. Like, can y'all please fix Alexandria so our people can go home and, <laughs> and be back in there? You know, I don't think they, I don't think they care about the money thing. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure the Commonwealth can give them some, some supplies so Carol can bake some cookies that aren't made with beet juice or something like that. I mean, just, yeah, I, I need them to go back home because I'm not, I'm not feeling comfortable with this Commonwealth. There, there are some things going on and they there's some always things going on. Yeah. As many communities that they have come across, as many groups of people they have come across, they should always remain skeptical. Right. Short of Deanna, short of Deanna, nobody else has let them in. Mm -hmm. And every other place has been some creepy ass shit, some eat me ass shit, some, some, you know, you know what I mean? And we going to take your shit, shit. Like, like, I still don't understand, like, <laughs> The governor, why would you want the prison when you had Woodbury? And Woodbury was pretty damn secure. It was pretty secure. Y'all had actual beds that weren't jail beds. And you want to move your people to jail beds. Just because like said, it's a whole nother half of this motherfucker. This motherfucker. You want the same corner we in that we cleared out? Right. And not even that. You want you want us gone so you can have the whole thing. Excuse me, you didn't find this shit. You didn't clear this shit. You just know. You know the the governor is a whole different. That's a whole different story too. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Well, they kind of sort of do have coverings on their thighs, but it's just like right up under the butt. Like the upper, the upper thighs in the back, there's no, there's no covering. I don't know if that black spandex or whatever is like puncture proof. I don't know what kind of material that is, but yeah, booty just hanging. 
and <laughs> and then you got the little the little coverings like right above the knees so it's like it's 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 securing the whole the, booty hole ass out you uh, ass out you yeah ass out. that's what it is but yeah that's what it is that's what it is when you fall on your back, you're still covered. You should. He literally could have been laid there, and he would have survived. He didn't even have to do all that moving. I'm telling you, incompetent. Because at some point, they were gonna tired of trying to bite your ass and move the fuck on. Maybe you, you moving? Me no, because those walkers seem like real determined. Because even when they can't get to them, if they see them or hear them. They're just sitting there clawing and they'll just be there. They might be there two days and they're going to be like, scratch, scratch. But they they will stay there. They are persistent. Yeah. I will give them that. Yeah. But they are persistent, but. Mm, I'm just saying that they need to train their guards a little bit better. Or they're gonna get people killed. I I just I don't know. I I don't understand. I'm just still confused as to why they were like why he was panicking. Right. And then explain to me why the hell was Mercer's helmet off? Why was his helmet off? I told you why when he was doing the slashy slashy, it fogged up his glasses so he couldn't see. So he had to take it off so he can get blood in his beard. All over his face. Mm-hmm. Like, ill. Ha, ha, has no one told you? He needed beard moisture. <laughs> no. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Okay, no, that's gross. Whatever. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. Let's see. Did we forget anything? I think we covered pretty much everything. We got the Carol and Lance stuff. We got the, and do you know there are actually people, I don't know if they're being serious or not. Do you know people have started shipping Lance and Carol? Ew. I'm like. Nah, that's Ezekiel boo. You better quit playing you know, with Ezekiel. Wife. You know, it's a whole bunch of folks who don't like her, her with Ezekiel. And that's a whole other conversation that we're not going to go into right now. Okay. But she like she like Ezekiel. That's the only thing that matters. That's all that matters. That's her boo thing. <sighs> End of discussion. That is her boo thing. Right. So anyway, um, I think that's it. Because I know you are chomping at the bit to talk about this other episode. So I think we're gonna wrap this one up so we can move it along. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for our show. You'll find us online at www. I say you'll find you can find us online at www.phantomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. You can watch our videos on YouTube and listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.